en quoi Please be seated. Le président, veuillez vous asseoir. This Thursday, 7 August 2014, the trial chamber in the extraordinary chambers in the courts of Cambodia continues its public hearing for the pronouncement of the judgment in case 002-01, which is the first segment of case 002, dated 19 September 2007, slash ECCC slash TC against the accused Nguyen Chi, born on 7 July 1926, and Kiu Samporn, born on 27 July 1931. Ms. Sakolbuti, could you report the Madame attendance Sarkovuti, of the parties and individuals to de la this proceeding? Des Ms. Sakolbuti, Mr. President, the Greffier Monsieur observes Président, that all parties to the proceeding are present. Que des parties President, sont thank you, Ms. Sakolbuti. Security guards, you are instructed. De sécurité to bring the accused to the dock before this chamber. President, Mr. Kiyosampon, you may be seated. Le Président, Monsieur Kiyosampon, vous pouvez vous asseoir. President. Before the pronouncement of the judgment, the trial chamber would like to inform the parties and the general public that only a summary of the judgment will be pronounced.
In the summary, the chamber will use the ECCC abbreviation résumé, in place of the extraordinary chambers in the courts of Cambodia. l'acronyme CETC pour désigner les chambres extraordinaires au sein des tribunaux cambodgiens. The following is a summary of the attachment in case 002-01. The following is a summary of the trial chamber's judgment in case 002-01. The only authoritative count of the findings is contained in the full written judgment, which will be made available in Khmer. English en and French, en immediately after this hearing. Case 002 concerns the responsibility of Nun Chi and Kiu Samphorn for crimes committed in Democratic Cambodia, that is, DK, between 17 April 1975 and 6 January 1979. Following the issuance of the closing order by the co-investigating judges on 15 September 2010, concluding almost three years of judicial investigations, Nun Chi and Kiyo Samphorn were brought to trial. This case originally included two further accused, Ying Tiret and Ying Sari. In 2011, the proceedings against Ying Tiret were stayed and the charges against her severed from the case. After she was found unfit to stand trial, due to a progressive demanding disease. Ying Sari's death in 2013 extinguished all criminal and civil actions against him before the ECCC. During the period from 17 April 1975 to 6 January 1979, Nunchi is alleged to have served as Deputy Secretary of the Communist Party of Cambodia, that is CPK, a full rise member of the CPK Central and Standing Committees, Chairman of the People's Representative Assembly, and on occasion, Acting Prime Minister of the DK government. Kyu Sampon allegedly held various positions in the CPK and DK, including President of the State Presidium. He is also alleged to have been Chairman of Political Office 870 and a member of the CPK Standing Committee. The initial hearing in case 002 was held from 27 to 30 June 2011. In September 2011, the trial chamber severed the proceedings in case 002 into a series of smaller trials because of the size and complexity of the closing order and the age and health of the accused. The trial chamber limited the scope of the first trial in case 002 referred to since as case 002-01, two crimes against humanity alleged to have been committed during, first, the evacuation of Phnom Penh on 17 April 1975, 
which has been referred to in these proceedings as movement of population phase one, phase one and second, movements of population in other regions of Cambodia from September 1975 until December 1977, movement of population phase two, Désigné sous l'appellation de phase 2 des déplacements de population. The trial chamber started hearing evidence on 21st November 2011. And in October 2012, following an application by the Office of the Co-Prosecutors, expanded the scope of the charges in case 002-01 to include charges related to the alleged executions of former Khmer public officials at Tul Pouchere from April 1975. The scope of the charges relevant to case 002-01 include factual allegations concerning the accused responsibility for the following crimes. In relation to the evacuation of Phnom Penh on 17 April 1975, the accused are alleged to be responsible for the following crimes against humanity, murder, extermination, political persecution, other inhumane acts in the form of forced transfers, and other inhumane acts in the forms of attacks against human dignity. In relation to the movements of population from, to, and within the central, or north, southwest, west, and east zones from September 1975 to December 1977, the accused are alleged to be responsible for the following crimes against humanity, extermination, political persecution, other inhumane acts in the form of forced transfers, other inhumane acts in the form of attacks against human dignity, and other inhumane acts in the form of enforced disappearances. In relation to Tul Pu Chirei, the accused are alleged to be responsible for the crimes against humanity of murder, extermination, and political persecution. It is alleged that each accused committed a number of these crimes by participating in a joint criminal enterprise, the common purpose of which was to implement rapid socialist revolution in Cambodia through a great leap forward and to defend the party against enemies by whatever means necessary. It is alleged that in order to achieve this common purpose, the accused designed a number of policies, the implementation of which resulted in and or involved a number of the crimes against humanity charged in case 002-01 and which the accused intended to be committed. It is further alleged that the accused planned, ordered, instigated, aided and abetted the aforementioned crimes against humanity. In the alternative, the accused are also alleged to be responsible on the basis of superior responsibility. Over the course of 20 months of Evidentiary hearings, the trial chamber heard the testimony of 92 individuals, including three experts, 53 fact witnesses, five character witnesses, 
and 31 civil parties. More than 5,800 evidentiary documents were subjected to examination and admitted, totaling over 222,000 pages over the three official languages. The chamber admitted 1,124 written statements and transcripts of witnesses and civil parties who did not appear before the chamber in place of oral testimony. The hearing of evidence in case 002-01 concluded on 23rd July 2013. Closing arguments took place in October 2013. Before beginning the evidentiary hearings, the trial chamber determined a large number of preliminary and procedural issues which it considered constituted a potential barrier to the commencement of trial, while others are addressed in the judgment. The trial chamber concluded that it has personal jurisdiction over Nunchi and Kiyu Sampon and that the crimes against humanity for which the accused are charged in case 002-01 fall within the subject matter and temporal jurisdiction of the ECCC. Historical background. As a preliminary matter, the trial chamber examined the historical development of the CPK and its policies, including the forced movements of the population from the cities and targeting of Khmer Republic soldiers and civilian officials. The chamber has also examined the general conditions in Phnom Penh leading up to the Khmer Rouge's final assault on the city, which began in January 1975 and culminated in the takeover and forced transfer of the inhabitants of Phnom Penh on 17 April 1975. The trial chamber finds that in 1959 to Samut, Pol Pot and Nun Chi began the process of creating a new Cambodian Communist Party free of the Vietnamese influence characterized by the earlier Indochina Communist Party. The founding principles of this party were Marxism, Leninism, and Democratic Centralism. The first party congress was held from 28 to 30 September 1960, during which the party statute was adopted and the leadership committee appointed. Tu Samut was appointed secretary and Nun Chi deputy secretary of the party, with Pol Pot and Mamon as the other members of the standing committee. In addition to the members of the Standing Committee, Central Committee members were also recruited, including Yang Sari, Kami, Chong, and Von Wait. At the Second Party Congress in February 1963, Pierre Popot was appointed Party Secretary and Nunji Deputy Party Secretary. The use of political and revolutionary violence was reaffirmed. The Third Party Congress was held in 1971 and reiterated the party's strategic line adopted at the first and second congresses. By 1969, the economy in Cambodia was flagging and there was uncertainty as to whether it would be dragged into the war in Vietnam. Despite Nordam Sihanouk's official policy of neutrality. From 1969, 
devastating American bombings in Cambodia served to push North Vietnamese troops further into the country, which heightened the crisis. In 1970, Lonnell, who was supported by the USA, overthrew Norodom Sihanouk who was outside Nodam of Cambodia Alors at the time. Norodom Sihanouk created Nodam the Sihanouk National United Front of Kampuchea, FUNC, a political Funk, movement to fight against those who instigated his overthrow. In May of that year, Norodom Sihanouk, année, with the tacit support of the CPK, formed a new government Nordam in Sihanouk exile called the Royal Government of Royal National Royal Union of Kampuchea, KRUNK. Q. Samporn was the deputy prime minister and the minister of national defense of Krunk, in which roles he served as the link between Norodom Sihanouk and Pol Pot. The Krunk administration lacked real power in Cambodia, although Norodom Sihanouk remained influential overseas. The CPK was in fact responsible for the armed struggle in Cambodia. The CPK leaders had a strict policy of secrecy and did not disclose their identities publicly. Instead, they favored the use of the term Anka, a deliberately vague and a few scattery term purporting to refer to an entity which led the country and which ordinary people understood had the power to control the entire nation. They also used public figures such as Kiu Sampon and Rodam Sihanouk locally and internationally to present a respectable facade for their actions and policies. Before 17 April 1975, CPK leaders designed and implemented the policies that are the subject of Case 002 as a result of the trial chamber's severance decision, two of these five policies are the subject of the charges at issue in case 002-01 and were examined, examined in detail. First, the repeated movement of the population from towns and cities to rural areas, as well as from one rural area to another. And second, the targeting of spe specific groups, in particular former officials of the Khmer Republic, including both civil servants and former military personnel and their families. The other policies will be examined more thoroughly in case 002-02 and in any subsequent trials. In relation to the movement of the population, the chamber finds that from 1970, people were forcibly transferred from villages by the Khmer Rouge and sent to remote areas. There was a repetitive pattern of forced transfers which reached its climax when the Khmer Rouge took control of the whole country and Phnom Penh and other cities were emptied of their inhabitants. The CPK leaders considered city dwellers to be intrinsically disloyal and concluded that they would remain politically and ideologically corrupt as well as difficult to control if they were allowed to stay in the cities. The chamber finds that the evacuation of cities had a dual purpose, preventing enemies from destabilizing CPK forces and preventing cadres from being corrupted by the upburned population. 
In relation to the targeting policy, although there was no written directive on the issue, the Chamber finds that the CPK established a policy of targeting Khmer Republic soldiers and officials. The policy regarding captured Khmer, uh, Khmer Republic soldiers and officials radicalized from 1970 until 1975. Initially, a distinction was drawn between loyal soldiers and those suspected of being spies. Soldiers were often re-educated and forgiven, whereas suspected spies were usually executed. However, from around 1972 to, or 1973, Khmer Republic soldiers were less likely to be forgiven and more likely to be executed if captured by the CPK forces. The evolution of the policy to target Khmer Republic soldiers and officials was marked by an increasing use of violence. In the months leading to the final assault on Phnom Penh, the Funk struck a, con a conciliatory tone in radio broadcast directed at the Khmer Republic officials and soldiers inviting them to defect and informing them that they would be welcome to join the Khmer Rouge forces should they defect. The chamber finds that these messages were a calculated attempt to reduce opposition to the Khmer Rouge advance and to lure Khmer Republic officials into a false sense of security. Movement of Population Phase 1 the trial chamber finds that on the morning of 17 April 1975, Khmer Rouge forces from zones across Cambodia attacked and entered Phnom Penh from all directions. Various Khmer Rouge divisions took control of different areas of Phnom Penh. In the hours after the Khmer Rouge entered Phnom Penh, the population celebrated, believing that peace would return to Cambodia. However, in the following hours, the Khmer Rouge began to direct the population to leave Phnom Penh immediately. The Khmer Rouge told the local population that it was a temporary evacuation whose purpose was to protect them against aerial bombardments by the, Uni by the USA or to allow Ankar to ensure the safety of the city. Even though even residents who did not believe these statements evacuated Phnom Penh in the face of threats by the Khmer Rouge soldiers. Khmer Rouge soldiers were under orders to forcibly evacuate the city using any means. The population of Phnom Penh were subjected to threats or physical abuse. Those who did not obey or resisted were shot and killed on the spot. Without exception, and in spite of the intense heat, the entire population of Phnom Penh was forced to leave, including monks, the elderly, young people, the sick, and injured from the city's hospital, pregnant women and those who Les had recently given birth. Civil party Punjatai described how the further Pignatai they traveled from the capital, the more the that the exhaustion claimed de the sick, the injured, the lame, and the old, and increasingly décès, they began to see bodies left infirmes, beside the highway. Pit Sri Paul stated that by the time they reached Stung Mien Chai, they saw dead people on hospital beds, 
abandoned by road signs. Quick Sri Paul, having no breast milk, milk or medicine for her baby, could only feed her body, her baby water. Her baby soon died, and she was instructed to bury her in the forest. Others, such as Bai Sapani's youngest daughter, who suffered from dysentery and vomiting died from inadequate medical care. On 17 April 1975, the population of Phnom Penh was in the region of 2 to 2.5 million people. Many had fled to the city in order to escape fighting and bombing in other regions. Upon being ordered out of the city, the population used whatever means available to them to leave Phnom Penh, mostly on foot, but also by bike, push cart, and car. Conditions throughout the journey were appalling, characterized by insufficient food, water, medicine, and accommodation, and many evacuees suffered terror, threats, or incidents of violence by Khmer Rouge soldiers. There were numerous instances of Khmer Rouge soldiers shooting and killing civilians during the course of the evacuation, while many others die of exhaustion, more, nu more nutrition, or disease. Civil party Chen Eng Li recalled seeing a Khmer Rouge soldier tear, tear apart a crying baby who was crawling on his dead mother's body. Many evacuees, including children, were separated from their families. The Khmer Rouge established checkpoints along the roads leading out of Phnom Penh and in certain other towns where people were searched and questioned about their biography, their family members, and the work they did in Phnom Penh. Many people identified by the Khmer Rouge as Khmer Republic Beaucoup officials were either arrested and thereafter disappeared or, Khmer, or were killed soit in the days disparu, following 17 soit April 1975. Evacuees from Phnom Penh traveled between several days to several weeks and jours, settled in rural areas throughout the rest of the country. The trial chamber finds that La at least de instance two est million convaincue. people were forcibly transferred from Phnom Penh by the Khmer Rouge soldiers under false pretexts and threats, often at gunpoint, with almost no prior warning or in terrifying and violent circumstances, resulting in large numbers of people being killed or dying of exhaustion starvation or illness. The chamber does not find credible the defendant's the claims that Phnom Penh was evacuated to protect the people from American bombing. The CPK's own leadership came to Phnom Penh in the days following 17 April 1975, basing themselves in prominent locations, apparently without any significant attempt to take precautions against bombing, which had in any event halted in 1973. Nor does the chamber accept that shortage of food in Phnom Penh was the reason for evacuating the population. The, population. the CPK military had blocked the Mekong River and bombarded Ho Chi Tong Airport 
les forces Khmer Rouge disposaient du contrôle de l'ensemble des voies de communication, y compris le Mekong, l'aéroport de Pochentong qui était encore opérationnel, ainsi que des infrastructures comme celles de, du port de Kampong qui auraient pu servir à importer des vivres. Although food was in short supply, the CPK leadership, applying its stance of independence and mastery, les dirigeants du PCK, appliquant cela le principe d'indépendance et de souveraineté, ont refusé l'aide humanitaire étrangère, Therefore, à moins qu'elle ne soit accordée sans aucune no condition, faisant donc qu'aucun moyen destiné à assurer l'approvisionnement adéquat des habitants de Phnom Penh ne soit disponible. Event, en tout état de cause, la Chambre rejette toute suggestion à l'effet que l'idée presque entièrement la ville de Phnom Penh de ses habitants était nécessaire ou proportion. The only reasonable conclusion is that the leadership decided to transfer the population of Phnom Penh based in part on its earlier experience of evacuating other areas for military, economic, and ideological reasons, and régions, to allow the leadership better control of the people and to prevent enemies from destabilizing CPK forces. Les de les forces du PCK. Movement of population phase two. The trial chamber finds that after 17 April 1975, The funding Après and le 17 avril 1975, la principale line. stratégie du parti a été de the défendre et le pays. On building and expanding le parti s'est attaché à construire et à développer des coopératives, tant dans le but de mener la lutte des classes of par la dictature du prolétariat, que dans celui d'accroître la production agricole, et ce pour donner un fondement durable à la révolution socialiste. People had to be moved. Pour pouvoir construire et développer ces coopératives, that les populations devaient être déplacées. Allowed it to overcome les dirigeants du parti considéraient que les déplacements de population lui permettraient de surmonter les défis inhérents à l'édification et à la défense du pays, ainsi qu'à la réorganisation de la de l'économie, de la politique et de l'armée. La Chambre de Commerce that Between September 1975 and early 1977, at least 300,000 to 400,000 people were forcibly displaced from various locations in Kandao, Kampong Chan, 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 Kampong Prévenir Central, South-West, West, and East Zone, Sud-Ouest, to Battambang and Pusat provinces, Northwest Zone, and Pusat province, Central Zone, and Previhi province, Sector 103. The Chamber has further found that between September 1975 and December 1977, more than 30,000 people were displaced to Krati, Sector 505, from and within Prevain and Svairian provinces, East Zone, within Kampong Thom and Kampong Cham provinces, à l'intérieur des provinces de Kampong Thong et Kampong Chan, zone centrale, ainsi qu'à l'intérieur de la province de Batambang, zone nord-ouest. Il y avait suffisant d'évidence pour la Chambre de trouver les requêtes de standard de preuve que les éléments de preuve produits devant elle sont insuffisants pour établir au niveau de preuve requis l'existence d'un déplacement de population vers les provinces de Simri, Kampong Chan, 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 Kampong Most people were ordered to leave Durant their phase locations de déplacement de population, and transferred under armed guard. Those who refused transfer or attempted escape were arrested, detained, and forced to leave their homes. Those who refused transfer or attempted escape were arrested, detained, and forced to leave their homes. Those who refused transfer or attempted escape were arrested, detained, and forced to leave their homes. Those who refused transfer or attempted escape were arrested, detained, and forced to leave their homes. Those who refused transfer or attempted escape were arrested, detained, and forced to leave their homes. Those who refused transfer or attempted escape were arrested, detained, and forced to leave their homes. Those who refused transfer or attempted escape were arrested, detained, and forced to leave their homes. Those who refused transfer or attempted escape were arrested, detained, and forced to leave their homes. Those who refused transfer or attempted escape were arrested, detained, and forced to leave their homes. Those who refused transfer or attempted escape were arrested,
Khmer Rouge soldiers and officials forcibly transferred people by various methods, including threats, méthodes, y force, les menaces, and deception. La force et le mensonge. People were frightened and lived in a state of terror, Les gens étaient effrayés, unwilling et sous or unable to disobey or question orders. During a brief stop at Samrao Jiao Market, Gong Wati's son, who had diary and swollen limbs, died. Khmer soldiers extracted Gong Wati to leave his body with them, et ses membres étaient enfuis. and she did not know what they les did with it. Ont donné à Wai le corps de son fils People were transported by different modes, including truck, les gens boat, étaient ox cart, and foot. Certains étaient transportés en camion, the conditions en of their transfer depended on the particular marchés. mode of transportation. Les conditions For example, de voyage selon le mode trucks de to assembly points, par exemple, including at Phnom Penh and Kampong Chinang, west zone, were crowded. People were bondés. constantly monitored. Les gens no water étaient surveillés en permanence. Food, Ils n'avaient pas de were not allowed et to pas carry any belongings. Ils n'étaient pas autorisés à emporter quoi que People ce soit. Les gens étaient sur les trucks, mais n'ont pas eu d'assistance. À bord des camions, ils Those étaient malades. Mais ils ne recevaient by aucune truck. assistance. Les passagers des camions étaient surveillés soldiers par des soldats Khmer Rouge who armés at those qui tiraient who tried to sur quiconque escape. tentait de s'enfuir. Many were sick. Had diarrhea Beaucoup de gens étaient malades, to avaient la diarrhée et on devaient se track. soulager à bord du camion. Due to exhaustion, starvation or illness, certaines personnes some people mouraient died. d'épuisement, de faim ou de maladie. The chamber finds that those who went willingly due to the poor living conditions la Chambre considère que les personnes qui ont accepté de partir volontairement l'ont fait pour échapper à leurs mauvaises conditions de vie ou à la situation humanitaire catastrophique causée par les Khmer Rouges. Par conséquent, tout consentement apparent à un transfert assorti de promesses de conditions de vie meilleures ne saurait être considéré comme l'expression d'un choix véritable. Tool Pochrei The chamber finds that immediately after 17 April 1975, at least 250 local officers were transported from Bosa to Tulpochre and then executed. The executions were carried out by Khmer Rouge soldiers from the northwest zone. zone from the northwest zone. Soldiers from battalions 201 or 202 were tasked with guarding the road during the execution. The victims, who comprised both former Lunol soldiers and civilian officers of the previous regime, who had surrendered and were no longer taking active part in hostilities, were targeted in accordance with CPK policy and were later either buried at Tourbutre or bulldozed into a pond using equipment sent by the zone committee. Crimes against humanity. The chamber is satisfied that beginning by 17 April 1975, est convaincu qu'à partir du 17 avril 1975 et December au moins jusqu'au mois de décembre 1977, à savoir durant la période très enlevée du premier procès dans le cadre du dossier numéro 002, il y avait une attaque spread et systématique contre la population civile du Cambodge. L'attaque a été lancée contre la population civile du Cambodge. L'attaque a été lancée contre la population civile du Cambodge. L'attaque a été lancée contre la population civile du Cambodge. L'attaque a été lancée contre la population civile du Cambodge. L'attaque a été lancée contre la population civile du Cambodge. L'attaque a été lancée contre la population civile du Cambodge. L'attaque a été lancée contre la population civile du Cambodge. L'attaque a été lancée contre la population civile du Cambodge. Enforced disappearances, attacks against meurtre, human dignity, extermination, and political forcée, persecution. Atteinte à la dignité humaine. This attack victimized millions of civilians throughout Cambodia, and resulted in a large number of refugees fleeing to neighboring countries. Tandis qu'un grand nombre de personnes ont pris la fuite vers le pays voisin pour se réfugier. Cette attaque a été menée dans le cadre de la mise en œuvre de la politique et des plans du parti visant à construire le socialisme et à défendre le pays. 
The chamber is satisfied that the attack was widespread in both its geographic scope and number of victims. The chamber also finds that the victimes. attack was systematic La chambre in so far as que cette crimes of such scope and magnitude could not have magnitude. been random n'ont pas pu and être perpétrés de manière aléatoire, of, mais uniquement dans le cadre de la mise en œuvre de la politique du parti. La Chambre considère la Chambre considère comme établie que cette attaque Cambodia. visait la population civile du Cambodge. In relation to movement of population phase one, s'agissant de la phase 1 des déplacements de population, la Chambre de première instance est parvenue à la conclusion que les crimes contre l'humanité suivants ont été permettés. Political persecution and other inhumane acts in the forms of forced transfer and attack against human dignity. In relation to movement of population phase two, the trial chamber finds that the following crimes against humanity were perpetrated: extermination, political persecution, and other inhumane acts in the form of forced transfer, attacks against human dignity, and enforced disappearances. In relation to the events at Tool Po Chirei, the Chamber finds that the executions described above constitute the crimes of murder, extermination, and political persecution as crimes against humanity. Joint criminal enterprise. In relation to the alleged joint criminal enterprise, the Chamber concludes that the closing order as limited in S002-01 did not charge the accused with responsibility, accused with responsibility for the crimes of extermination ne on the basis of JCE in relation to the movement of population phases 1 and 2. Further, the closing order did not charge the accused with the responsibility for enforced disappearances on the basis of JCE in relation to movement of population phase two. Some Further still, the closing order did not charge the accused with responsibility for political persecution on the basis of JCE in relation to events at Dual Bouchray. Pas plus qu'il n'a été retenu en raison for des crimes de persécution pour motifs crimes, politiques perpétrés the sur le site de Dual Bouchray. S'agissant de ces crimes précis, La Chambre with constate que les poursuites dirigées à l'encontre des accusés, modes of liability telles qu'elles résultent de la décision de renvoi, ne sont pas fondées sur la participation des intéressés à une entreprise criminelle commune, mais reposent sur d'autres modes de responsabilité. La participation à une entreprise criminelle commune a toutefois été retenue dans les poursuites concernant les autres the crimes décrits plus haut. Throughout the time period relevant to case 0, la Chambre de première instance 0, 1, est convaincue que there existed a variety of persons dans le cadre du who shared the common purpose of implementing a rapid socialist revolution through a great leap forward by whatever means necessary. Une révolution socialiste the participants rapide, included la members of the standing and central committees, les participants incluaient des membres government du comité et du comité and central, zone secretaries, ainsi que des ministres et des secrétaires de zone, Pol Pol, incluant au moins Pol Pot, Kyo Sampon, Yeng Sari, Son Sen, Yeng Sari, Von Wet, Son Sen, Von Wet, Sao Pem, Tamok, Ruh Niem, Roi Trun, Koi Trun, Kae Pok, Chan Som, Chu Chet, Chu Chet, Yeng Teret, Yeng Teret, and Mei Prang. And Mei Prang. The evidence establishes that this common purpose to rapidly build and defend the country through, through a socialist revolution was based on the principles of secrecy, independence, self-reliance, and collectivization, and was firmly established by June 1974, continuing at least until December 1977. The Chamber finds that there was a joint criminal enterprise to achieve the common purpose through, among other means, policies to possibly displace people from cities and towns and between rural areas. The crimes committed in the course of movements of population, phases 1 and 2, 
l'ont été dans le cadre de la mise en œuvre des plans et de la politique du parti. Parties, plans and policies. The chamber further finds de plus, that the party divided the Cambodian people que le PCK according to their classification and that the new people, et que le meaning all former city dwellers, possibly transferred to the countryside after the 17th April 1975, were to be re-educated. New people were not trusted le by the PCK ne faisait pas confiance as they were perceived as enemies of the revolution and the collective system. De la révolution et du système collectiviste. Further, all bad elements who en outre, could not be re-educated and all remnants of the former feudalist, imperialist and capitalist regimes were to be eliminated. Étaient voués à être Any who oppose or were perceived to oppose the revolution, revolution were targets for mistreatment and acts of violence. violence. The chamber further finds that these crimes are properly imputed to the members of the joint criminal enterprise. The chamber finds that during the time period at issue in case 00-01, there was a joint criminal enterprise to achieve the common purpose through, amongst the other means, a policy to target former Khmer Republic officials. The chamber finds that the murders and extermination committed at the were carried out in furtherance of party plans and policies, and that these crimes can be imputed to at least one member de la of the joint party, criminal enterprise. The Chamber now turns to summarize the criminal responsibility of each accused in this case, va à présent présenter un résumé role de and functions of Nunchir. Nunchir, whose birth de Nunchir. name is Lao Kum Lon, Nunchir, dont le nom was born on 7 Lon, July 1926 in Wat Ko village, Wat Ko, Sangkai district, district Batambong province. province. In 1941, en he 1941, moved to Thailand, where he studied and worked in the Thai Ministry of Finance et au sein and the Thai Ministry Thailand of Finance, Foreign Affairs. Ainsi que celui des affaires étrangères. In 1950, he joined the Communist Party of Thailand and later returned to Cambodia to join the resistance movement. Nun Chi then joined the Indochina Communist Party. From about 1950, his activism intensified as he engaged in propaganda and education activities. He also engaged in underground work à Phnom Penh. for the revolutionary movement in Phnom Penh as a Phnom member of the party city committee en tant que membre while du working variously as a teacher, a vendor, or a clerk for an import-export company. Nunchi was introduced to Pol Pot in 1955 or 1956. Pol Pot and Nunchi who were both members of the Khmer People's Revolutionary Party, initially worked together as assistants to Tu Samut. During the first Congress of the party in 1960, Nunchi was nominated Deputy Secretary, and the party was renamed the Workers' Party of Kampuchea. Nunchi retained the position of Deputy Secretary of the CPK throughout the DK period. Toute la du he was also a full rights member of both the CPK Central and Standing Committees, as well as chairman of the Standing Committee, as well as of the standing committee of the People's Representative Assembly. From September 1976, on several occasions, Nunchi officially exercised the role of acting Prime Minister of BK up until 1977, when Pol Pot resumed his duties. Nunchi had 
primary responsibility for, for propaganda related matters as well as for Ainsi the education of peasants, cadres and other party members, des membres du PCK. focusing in particular on the main principles du parti and economic et policies of the party. Nunchi's formal responsibility for propaganda and education related matters also extended to the discipline of cadres and other internal security matters, as well as the enemy situation more generally, where he advocated that enemies be uncovered and eliminated. The chamber has not been satisfied on the evidence that Nunchi was a member of the military committee of the CPK. However, his involvement in military and security matters was intrinsically linked with his long-standing authority within the party. Nunchi actively participated in the operations of the army, particularly concerning the war against Vietnam, receiving regular reports and providing instructions with regard to security matters, either directly or through the citizens of the party. Et en donnant des instructions sur Due to his security. seniority within the leadership of the CPK, Nunchi enjoys oversight of all le parties' activities, extending beyond the roles and responsibilities formally entrusted to him during the decay period. De the Donc, Chamber finds that within the standing committee, Nunchi exercised the ultimate de decision-making power of the party. As deputy secretary of the party, his control extended not only to political decisions, but also to the government and the administration of the UK and to military matters. Criminal responsibility of Nunchi. According to the closing order, as limited in case 002-01, Selon les décisions de renvoi through a JCE, committed the crimes against humanity or murder, political persecution and other inhumane acts, comprising forced transfers and attacks against human dignity, Meurtre, during movement of population of S1, political persecution and other inhumane acts, comprising forced transfers and attacks against the German dignity during movement of population phase 2 and murder and extermination during phase 2 des déplacements through executions of Khmer Republic officials at dual portrays. According to the closing order, Nunchi intentionally participated in or contributed Selon to the design and implementation of the common purpose which resulted in and or involved the commission of crimes commission de both crimes before and during the DK era. In his capacity as la deputy secretary of the CDK, member of the military committee and full rights member of the central and standing committees, Nunchi attended high-level meetings de de where policy was developed, participated Nunchi in elaborating the CPK's official policy documents, and publicly explained, endorsed, and encouraged CPK policies through speeches, propaganda, and political training. On this basis, the closing order also Sur cette base, alleges that Nunchi planned, ordered, instigated, edited, and abetted, or alternatively ordonné, is responsible as a superior for all crimes falling within the scope of case 002-01. The, the Chamber finds that Nunchi made a significant contribution to the realization of the common plan through his involvement in policy and propaganda, education and public training, through which he contributed to the development, planning, dissemination and implementation of the common purpose. As a full rights member of the Standing and Central Committees, Nunchi was a key actor responsible for the formulation of party policies. He participated in meetings at which the forced 
transfer of the inhabitants of Phnom Penh and other population movements were decided upon. Before and during the DK regime, Nguyen Chir focused on propaganda and training of Khmer Rouge cadres and appeared as the chairman, trainer, or speaker at a range of meetings trainings uh, or study sessions. He also played an instrumental role in issuing the revolutionary flag. The chamber finds that through these publications, speeches and public statements, Nguyen Chir had to de divide the population differentiating between peasant based people and their urban counterpart new people and so seeds of this trust among cadres and the rural population in respect of those in the cities the chamber finds that nunchir contributed significantly to the realization of the common purpose and that he intended to further the implementation of the common purpose through his actions. He shared with the other JCA participants the intent to commit the crimes involved. Further, in light of his contribution to developing the party line on class struggle, and the policy to target Khmer Republic officials, the chamber is also satisfied that Nguyen Chir shared with the other members of the JCE the requisite discriminatory intent for the crime of political persecution committed during movement of population phase one and two. Accordingly, the chamber finds that Nguyen Chir, through a JCE, committed the crimes against humanity of murder, political persecution, and other inhumane acts comprising forced transfer and attacks against human dignity during movement of population phase one, political persecution and other inhumane acts comprising, comprising of forced transfer and attacks against human dignity during movement of population phase two, and murder and extermination at Tour Poitre. The trial chamber further finds that Nguyen Chir planned, ordered, instigated, aided and abetted the aforementioned crimes. Considering Nguyen Chir's participation in JCE encompasses all the conduct forming the basis of the chamber's finding on these other forms of responsibility, the chamber has entered a conviction for commission of these crimes only through a JCE. In relation to the crimes for which the trial chamber concluded that joint criminal enterprise was not charged in the closing order, the chamber finds that Nguyen Chir planned, ordered, instigated, aided and abetted the crimes of extermination during movement of population phase one and two, political persecution at Tour Poitre and other inhumane acts comprising enforced disappearances during movement of population phase two. Further, the chamber finds that Nguyen Chir is both directly responsible and responsible as a superior for all crimes committed in the course of movement, movement of population phase one and two and for the crimes committed at Tour Poitre. Having found that Nguyen Chir was directly responsible for these crimes, the chamber declines to enter a conviction under the doctrine of superior responsibility, instead considering Nguyen Chir's superior position in sentencing. Role and functions of Q Samporn. Q Samporn, alias Haim, 
Haim o Non was born on the 27th of July 1931 in Chai or Rum Chai Commune, Rumdur District, Swairing Province. He began to study law in Phnom Penh, and then in 1953, having been having been awarded a scholarship by the Cambodian government, he traveled to France to study law and economics in Paris. Kiu Sampon joined the Marxist circle founded prior to his arrival in France and regularly attended by other Khmer students, including Ying Sari, Pol Pot, Ying Kirit, and Son Sen. And upon the departure of Ying Sari, became its leader. Like other members of the circle, Kiu Sampon joined the French Communist Party. He also assumed the leadership of the Union of Khmer Students. In 1959, Kiu Sampon presented his doctoral thesis entitled The Economy of Cambodia and Its Problems of Industrialization. In 1962, after returning to Cambodia, Kiu Sampon was elected to the National Assembly and appointed Secretary of State for Commerce. By er the early 1960s, Kiu Sampon had informal contact with senior CPK members. Kiu Somporn became a candidate member of the CPK Central Committee in 1971 and a full rights member in 1976. In 1970, Kiu Somporn was named deputy chairman of FUNC and commander in chief of the Cambodian People's National Liberation Armed Forces. In reality, Kiu Sampon held no direct military authority, and it was Pol Pot who was in charge of the CPNLAF forces. Kiu Sampon also assumed the post of Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of National Defense in Krunk. After the fall of Phnom Penh in April 1975, Kiu Sampon retained his roles as Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of National Defense, and the uh, Cambodian uh, People's National Liberation Armed Forces Commander-in-Chief, and as such continued to exercise certain diplomatic functions uh, such as meeting visiting delegations from foreign countries and leading Cambodian delegations on trips abroad. In April 1976, Kiu Sampon was appointed president of the state presidium, a role which was largely symbolic and in which he had no executive power. As president of the state presidium, uh, he continued to perform diplomatic and ceremonial functions. Kiu Sampon was never formally a member of the CPK Standing Committee, but actively participated in some Standing Committee meetings. In 1975, the CPK Standing Committee assigned Kiu Sampon responsibility for the front and the royal government and commerce for accounting and pricing. Around October 1975, Kiu Sampon became one of the two members of Office 870, which oversaw the implementation of standing committee decisions. However, the chamber is not satisfied that, as has been alleged, Kiu Sampon ever served as the chairman of Office 870. The chamber finds that Kiu Sampon's role during the DK period proves that he had the confidence and trust of the other members of the party center. Despite holding 
an array of titles, the evidence suggests that Q Sampon's decision-making power was primarily limited to matters of economics and foreign trade. However, he had broader authority and influence by virtue of his senior position. Through his attendance at, at central and standing committee meetings, his work in Office 870, his close and ongoing association with other CPK leaders, his supervision of the Commerce Committee, and the content of the speeches he made, he had knowledge of the CPK's policies and access to information about the situation in Cambodia generally. Criminal responsibility of Kiu Sampon. According to the closing order as limited in case 02-01, Kiu Sampon, through a JCE, committed the crimes against humanity of murder, political persecution, and other inhumane acts comprising forced transfer and attacks against human dignity during the movement of population phase one, political persecution, and other inhumane acts comprising forced transfer and attacks against human dignity during the movement of population phase two, and murder and external through execution of Khmer Republic officials at Tour Poitre. According to the closing order, Kiu Sampon intentionally participated in or contributed to the design and implementation of the common purpose which resulted in and or involved the commission of crimes both before and during the DK era. By virtue of his positions during the DK era, including his membership of the Central Committee and Office 870, the closing order alleges that Kiu Sampon attended and contributed to meetings, including standing committee meetings, where policy was discussed and the he also made public statements, performed diplomatic functions, and participated in indoctrination sessions, thereby endorsing and disseminating the common purpose international, uh, internationally and domestically. On this basis, the closing order also alleges that the accused planned, ordered, instigated, aided, and abetted, or alternatively is responsible as a superior for all crimes falling within the scope of case 02-01. The Chamber finds that Kiu Sampon made a significant contribution to the realization of the common plan and, uh, and that he intended to further the implementation of the common purpose through his actions. Kiu Sampon attended policy meetings of the Standing and Central Committees, as well as party congresses, where the common purpose and policies were planned and developed. He attended and participated in meetings where instructions and lessons concern, concerning the common purpose and policies were given. Kiu Sampon was present together with other army officers at B-5 during the final offensive against Phnom Penh. He addressed combatants at various broadcasts. Kiu Sampon held economic position where, drawing on his experience and education, he implemented elements of the common purpose relating to trade, imports, export, and commerce. He made public statements endorsing the common purpose and policy, encouraging all to build and defend the country according to the party line. Finally, in his roles as liaison with Norodom Sihanouk and as a diplomat, Hugh Samporn justified defended and praised the common purpose and policies, winning support for the Khmer Rouge both locally 
and abroad and permitting the secret and largely unhindered implementation of the common purpose through radical policy. He also shared with the other JCE participants the intent to commit the crimes involved. Accordingly, the chamber finds that Kiu Sampon, through a JCE, committed the crimes against humanity of murder, political persecution, and other inhumane acts comprising forced transfer and attacks against human dignity during movement of population phase one, political persecution and other inhumane acts comprising forced transfer and attacks against human dignity during movement of population phase two, and murder and extermination at Tour Poitre. The chamber also finds that the accused planned, instigated, aided, and and abetted the forced mentioned crimes during the movement of population phase one and two and at tour poetry. Considering that the accused participation in the JCE encompasses all the conduct forming the basis of the Chamber's findings on these other forms of responsibility, the Chamber will enter a conviction for commission of these crimes only through a JCE. In relation to the crimes, for which the trial chamber concluded that the joint criminal enterprise was not charged in the closing order, the chamber finds that Q. Sampon planned, instigated, aided and abetted the crimes of extermination during force, during movement of population phases one and two, political persecution at dual portrait and other inhumane acts comprising in forced disappearances during movement of population phase two. The chamber is not satisfied that Kiu Sampon held a position of sufficient authority to issue orders to commit the crimes. The chamber therefore dismisses the charge that he ordered the crimes. In addition, the chamber is not satisfied that the totality of the evidence demonstrates that Kiu Sampon exercised effective control over the perpetrators of crimes in the sense of having the ability to decide upon and take measure to prevent or punish perpetrators. Accordingly, the chamber dismisses the allegations in relation to superior responsibility. Civil party reparations. A total of 3,869 civil parties were admitted in the present case and comprised of consolidated group of civil parties at trial represented by two lead co-lawyers. The chamber notes that both of the accused in case 002 have been found indigent. Under the ECCC internal rules, the civil party lead co-lawyers may request the trial chamber to recognize specific reparations measures. Such measures have been designed or identified in coordination with the victim support section in order to appropriately acknowledge the harm suffered by civil parties as a result of the commission of crimes at issue in case 02-01 and to provide benefits to the civil parties that address this harm. In case 002-01, the civil party lead co-lawyers sought the judicial recognition of certain projects as appropriate reparations. The Chamber finds that, as a consequence of the crimes of which the accused have been convicted, the civil parties and a very large number of additional victims have suffered immeasurable harm, including physical suffering, economic loss, loss of dignity, psychological trauma, 
and grief arising from the loss of family members and close relations. The trial chamber endorses projects concerning the institution of a National Remembrance Day La project, the construction of a memorial in Phnom Penh to honor victims of forced evacuations, a testimonial therapy project, self help groups, a permanent exhibition, a mobile exhibition, and education project, the inclusion of a chapter on forced population movement and executions at Dwapu within the Cambodian school curriculum, the construction of a peace learning center, a booklet on adjudicated facts and civil party participation at the ECCC, two editions of the verdict in case 002-01, and inclusion of civil party names on the ECCC website. The chamber finds that sufficient funding and collaboration has been been secured to ensure their implementation. Full details of these projects are provided in the judgment. Finally, the Chamber considers that while the award sought in two remaining projects concerning a public memorial initiative and the construction of a memorial to the victims of the Khmer Rouge regime for Cambodians living in France may well appropriately address the harm suffered by victims and may provide moral and collective reparations to the civil parties suffering, it is unable to endorse these projects. The Chamber finds that, in regard to the memorials contemplated in Cambodia, no sufficiently detailed information such as their proposed locations or the agreement of any involved third parties has been provided, and that for both these two remaining projects, it has not been fully demonstrated that sufficient external funding has been secured. Disposition and sentence. This completes the summary of the Chamber's findings. I will now read out the disposition. Dispositif. The accused. Voilà qui me fait un résumé Please du jugement rise. rendu par la Chambre de première instance. Le président va présent donner lecture du dispositif. Accusé, veuillez vous lever. Mr. Nunchier, please rise. Monsieur Nunchier, veuillez vous lever. President, due to his age and his health problem, Mr. Nunchia cannot stand to Hear the disposition. The chamber allowed him to sit and listen to the disposition. Pursuant to Articles 5, 29 new and 39 new of the ECCC law, the trial chamber finds the accused Nunchi guilty of the crimes against humanity of extermination, encompassing murder, meurtre, political persecution, and other inhumane acts, et autres actes comprising forced transfer, forcé, enforced disappearances, forcé, and attacks against human dignity, committed commis within the territory of Cambodia, between 17 April 1975 and December 1977. Pursuant to Articles 5, 
29 new and 39 new of the ECCC law. The trial chamber finds the accused guilty of the crimes against humanity of extermination, encompassing murder, political persecution, and other inhumane acts, comprising forced transfer, enforced disappearances, and attacks against human dignity committed within the territory of Cambodia between 17 April 1975 and December 1977. The Chamber has considered the gravity of the crimes de for which the accused have been convicted, la des crimes, as well as relevant aggravating and mitigating circumstances, circumstances and witnesses' testimony regarding the character of Kyo Sampong. In determining the sentence, the Chamber has also taken into account the Supreme Court Chamber's Chambre pronouncements on sentencing in case 001 and precedents from other international tribunals whose judgments have also evaluated sentencing considerations in relation to crimes of a massive scale. The Chamber sentences the accused Nguyen-Chi to life imprisonment. The Chamber sentences the accused la Kyu Sampong Sampan to life imprisonment. De à the Chamber declares that Nguyen Chi was taken into pre-trial detention on 19 September 2007 and that Kyu Sampong was Kyu taken Sampan into pre-trial detention on 19 November 2007, 2007, and that both accused have remained in detention until the delivery of the verdict and sentence et de la peine. on 7 August 2014. This judgment is publicly pronounced in the ECCC main court room on 7 August 2014 and is appealable by the parties in accordance with the internal rules. Given the gravity of the crimes for which they have been convicted and subject to any order of the Supreme Court Chamber, Nunchi and Kirsten Porn shall remain in detention until this judgment becomes final. This hearing is now adjourned. Security personnel are directed to bring the convicted person Nunchi and Kyu Sampon to the Nunchi detention facility. All rise.